Manufacturing robust dive watches in the 1960s was a fashionable engineering accomplishment. A lot of brands were trying to outdo one another in toughness and water resistance. I'd say it's sort of akin to tourbillons today, although a tourbillon really doesn't serve any necessary or practical purpose. Fifty years ago, scuba divers staked their lives on the reliability of their timepieces, and Seiko has been a trusted and affordable maker of these for several decades now. Seiko released its first professional diver in 1965, the 6217. It was rated to 150 meters water resistance and cost a little over $100 at the time. Now fast forward to 1996 when they released the first 7S26 model, which is the topic of today's review for the SKX007. What's great about this watch is that 50 years later, you can still buy a professional ISO certified diver from Seiko for a little over a hundred bucks. As far as the case and dial are concerned, it's relatively perfect as a diver. Sized at 40 millimeters, it looks great on a range of wrist sizes. It's 46 millimeters lug to lug and only 13 millimeters thick. It's very wearable. There's a mix of brushed and polished surfaces, although there aren't really any sharp transitions between them. The brushing sort of fades into the polishing and vice versa, but that's kind of to be expected at this price point. The crown is at 4 o'clock, so it won't dig into your wrist, and it's just as easy to operate there as it is at 3 o'clock. The 120 click bezel is super easy to grip and turn, but without much play, so it stays where you put it. Flat crystal on top, made of hardlex, which is Seiko's hardened mineral crystal that is more shatter resistant than sapphire crystal, but certainly more scratch prone. When it comes to the dial, it's quintessentially Seiko. High contrast, bold elements, really a tool watch first and foremost with that quirkiness that you come to love as a Seiko collector. Supporting its purpose as a professional diver is the arrow tip minutes hand, and the seconds hand has a counterweight with loom so you can ensure the watch is running in low light conditions. From the bezel to the dial is quite a distance, and I really love the depth here. As the dial reads, this is water resistant to 200 meters, and does comply with ISO 6425 standards. It's the real deal. Behind the dial on the SKX007 is Seiko's 7S26, the same caliber behind the Orange Monster. You can recognize this caliber by its day-date window and the crown at 4 o'clock. It's a 21 joule automatic movement that doesn't hack or hand wind and will last about 41 hours on a full charge. It's been in production since 1996, so it's proven reliable and it's very serviceable. You can pick up the SKX007 on either a vented rubber strap or a Jubilee bracelet. Frankly, I don't like either of those, but if you had to go with one, I would choose the rubber. The Jubilee is a good look, but its center and end links are hollow, so the bracelet rattles and doesn't hold much of a shape. The rubber strap is comfortable and handsome, but if you have a you know, six and a half inch wrist or so, then the loose end of the strap will stick out too far past the keeper. In my opinion, this is a watch that needs a strap change to really shine, and a 22mm lug width yields a lot of options. A lot of folks go with NATOs, which I actually do with mine most of the time, but other options are getting aftermarket bracelets or rubber straps. If you're willing to put the time and money into it, you'll find something you like. The SKX007 retails for $425, but you'll get this online for about $150. You can also pick up a slightly different version, the SKX009, which is a Pepsi-style blue dial and blue bezel with a red diving scale. Honestly, if you like either of them, you're going to end up wanting to buy both at some point, and the price is right. Looks and price-wise, it's great for any collection. Now, I hesitate to recommend this to beginners only because I don't like either of the stock straps, and finding aftermarket straps just might not be a journey you're interested in taking when you buy your first watch or two. It's built like a tank, looks really great, and it's a versatile option for everyday wear. Considering its price and pedigree, it's really hard to pass this one up.